I'm Dan Karbowski and I'm going to be doing a presentation on inflammation. So what's to come? What is inflammation? Acute inflammation and its causes. Chronic inflammation and its causes. How to avoid and alleviate inflammation. Inflammation and exercise. And then I just included my sources. So what is inflammation? Inflammation is your immune system's response to a perceived injury or infection. When you're injured, like having a rolled ankle, the injured area will become red and swell as an army of beneficial white blood cells flow to help heal this area. This can occur in other parts of the body and to heal other ailments too, like an infection or to fight off a virus. Inflammation can look differently depending on where it occurs in the body. Um, so yeah, so inflammation could be like very visible, like on your ankle. It can also um, occur like say in your intestines uh, it could occur in your arteries even, um, or it could even be in your, um, your spine or your, your, your brain. It's a, it would be called meningitis if it was there. Um, there are two types of inflammation. The first is called acute inflammation. Inflammation, as it was intended, lasts for less than or equal to two weeks. The inflammation begins, the healing occurs, and the body is restored to its normal state before the injury or illness. This is known as acute infl inflammation and can be thought of as good. Like your body uh, needs inflammation um, to defend and to heal itself. Without acute inflammation, the body would not be able to do these things. So inflammation has a role um, in a healthy lifestyle. Um, causes of acute inflammation by category. Physically, uh, there are injuries, burns, and frostbite all cause um, acute inflammation. Biologically, infections, stress, and immune reactions. Chemically, alcohol exposure to other toxins such as chemical or environmental uh, toxins or like smoke from cigarettes. Um, and then there's psychological um, reasons for inflammation such as embarrassment, nervousness, or other emotional responses which cause inflammation which present as blushing. Um, and then there's chronic inflammation. Sometimes, however, the immune system can be triggered when it shouldn't be by things like prolonged stress, obesity, environmental toxins, and autoimmune disorders, or the immune system, system attacking your own body. Um, in these cases, instead of moving in, healing the problem, and then returning the body to its normal state, the inflammation persists over time and occurs in healthy cells. This chronic inflammation can last for months or even years. This is a problem because chronic inflammation is believed to be linked to many of the health problems we see today, such as high blood pressure, depression, Alzheimer's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, asthma, inflammatory bowel disease, depression, type 2 diabetes, Parkinson's, some, some kinds of cancers like colon cancer and heart disease. In fact, in one of the articles I was reading about, it said that people who experience chronic uh, inflammation have a three times more likelihood of um, having a heart attack and two times as much of a likelihood of as having stroke. I believe that might have been just in men, but still, we don't want chronic inflammation. And chronic inflammation diseases contribute to more than half of the deaths worldwide, according to an article published in Nature Medicine. Okay, so how do we avoid and alleviate inflammation? Well, there's diet. Um, don't eat too much processed or red meat, refined carbohydrates such as white bread, fried foods, alcohol, sugar, trans fats, or gluten if you have an intolerance. This causes intestinal inflammation. Uh, do eat a plant-based diet including leafy green vegetables, broccoli, fruits, especially berries and cherries, nuts, ground flaxseed, fatty fish like salmon or mackerel, olive, canola, or flaxseed oil, avocados, green tea, coffee, mushrooms, tomatoes, spices like ginger, turmeric, and clove, quinoa, and whole grain breads and cereal. Uh, with regard to lifestyle, don't smoke. <laughs> and do exercise regularly, get enough sleep, keep your stress under control, eliminate excess body fat, particularly belly fat. Um, there was an article that was talking about how even just the presence of excess body or fat cells causes inflammation particularly in the belly area you can also see your doctor for serious inflammation problems as there are other treatment options that they can recommend um, and finally the last slide inflammation and exercise so there's two things i really want to say here and i'll just read 
this to tell you about the first thing. Large population-based cohort studies consistently show an inverse association between markers of systemic inflammation and physical activity or fitness status, and data from several small-scale intervention studies support that exercise training diminishes inflammation. So in short, um, exercise and increased fitness levels are associated with lower levels of inflammation. Um, but to th basically this next part is just going to say that they, they need more information to, to see exactly how much um, exercise you know, has an effect on inflammation and, and, and some of these results are inconclusive. So more study needs to be done, um, but, but there is this, um, this, this association between increased fitness level and activity and lower levels of inflammation. And the second thing I wanted to show is this, that exercise does break down your muscles, um, but with proper recovery time, plus those other things that I was talking about, diet, sleep, and um, keeping your stress under control, then you experience acute inflammation after you exercise, but then your muscles come back stronger. However, if you exercise and you do not uh, provide yourself with proper recovery time plus those other things, diet, sleep, and keeping your stress under control, then your body does go into a state of chronic inflammation, which is not the greatest thing. So basically, do go exercise and then give yourself the proper recovery time plus your diet, your sleep, and you know keeping your stress to a minimum. And that is the best way to go about things. All right, and I think that's it. Thanks for listening, and I hope you learned something. Take care.